about a four-part miniseries on Netflix called When They See Us. It was put together and directed by Ava DuVernay, which is the director of Selma and also a documentary called The 13th. She was also offered, I believe I have this story correct. You guys should fact check me though. I think I heard this, her say this in one of her Breakfast Club interviews that she was actually offered the Black Panther movie. But she passed on it and recommended Ryan Coogler. Because even though it's this huge blockbuster, big budget movie, she felt that he'd be able to do it more justice or do it better. It wasn't necessarily in her wheelhouse and she wanted to uh, put him on. And that to me speaks to Ava's selflessness and the true artist in her where she knows that the truest telling of the story the quality the best quality of the story is what's paramount not who does it but the fact that it's done the best way that it can be done and she is probably the best at these like social commentary type movies like Selma or not just movies projects because Selma was a movie the 13th was a documentary about the 13th amendment and how it has a clause that I'm going to paraphrase something to the effect of slavery is outlawed it's illegal unless someone breaks the law and becomes a criminal then those folks can be treated like slaves and essentially are today, right? We have like slave labor, people working for 50 cents an hour for companies like Victoria's Secret and companies that make police uniforms, the country's military uniforms, et cetera, et cetera. A lot done with prison labor. So that that's a documentary, right? Called The 13th, which you guys can check out. Also available on Netflix. When They See Us is the story of, true story, of five gentlemen known as the Central Park Five. If you want to look up their stories, which I implore you to, just Google Central Park Five. And the story is about five kids in high school, ages 15 to 14 to 16, that were hanging out, that were like going to some sort of party. A bunch of kids from school met up and wound up like a shitload of them wound up getting together at uh, Central Park at night. That night, there were like a couple assaults and muggings in Central Park, and one woman was brutally beaten and raped. The cops go to Central Park off, I guess, like one of the people that got mugged or something like that. May have called the cops, I'm not sure. But the cops go to Central Park and... The kids start, like, running away, you know, like, the cops came, and it's kind of like, do you guys remember Fast and the Furious? And I remember from, like, back in the day, going to, like, Flatlands and shit when I was into, like, that era of my life, like, with the car racing and shit like that. When cops would come, it would be like that, like, that scene in Fast and the Furious that they just started yelling out, cops, 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 and everybody just, like, it shows, like, that aerial view, and everybody's, like, running to their cars, and they look like ants. And just, like, speeding out of there. Uh, That's how these kids are, like, just running all over the place. Like, getting, you know, getting away from the cops. Because the cops came, you know, they're hanging out in a park after hours. And they, uh, for the most part, make it out. A couple of them, I think, get arrested that night. And then there's, they find this, uh, the cops wind up finding this woman that's, like, fighting for her life. Pretty much left for dead in the park. And she had been brutally raped and beaten. Long story short, the five children, again, ages uh, 14 to 16, are all detained overnight. Their parents don't know where they are. They don't have attorneys or, or anything like that. And the cops are, you know, just trying to get their, wrap their heads around what the hell happened that night and running uh, tests and 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 pulling DNA from the victim, as well as taking statements from the other victims that were like mugged and beat up and stuff. And they have this room of like 
a couple dozen kids that they were able to gather up like in the park and they have them all in like this like classroom looking place in the precinct and there's this lady that's the head of one of the units uh a police officer that was like hell-bent on this being like a a gang rape and they were all in on it and she's trying to like weave together this narrative even though it's not matching up you know based on like the interviews they're having with the kids and the interrogations and none of the stories are matching up they don't know, even know about this uh lady that got that got uh, uh brutally beat up and raped and you know they're just scared kids at home they know they uh i'm sorry not not at home and they know they're gonna get in trouble at home um you know like for not going home and shit like that and the little high school kids but long story short out of after actually probably long story longer because <laughs> i'm gonna keep talking about it right the a tactic they might be familiar with from you know like all these shows and documentaries and stuff that have become popularized like as of late of like these cop shows and first 48 and you know murder stories and id discovery channel shit a tactic to uh during an interrogation is you know to make the suspect like hungry and tired and eventually they'll break down and tell you the quote-unquote truth but that's also a tactic used by uh, for lack of a better term dirty cops that coerce someone into giving a false confession a lot of cases that i've listened to around false confessions in in the uh, actual innocence podcast happen in just that manner like people they're they're like after you know like 16 hours of of sitting there and answering questions back and forth and not eating and you're just tired and you want to go home you just start agreeing with them and saying yes to whatever the hell it is that they say because you just want it to be over and that's like grown-ass men and women saying stuff like that imagine a little 14 year old kid that doesn't know what the fuck is going on and doesn't know his rights and you know the cops are literally telling them you know so uh was so-and-so there who so-and-so you know who so-and-so is don't say you don't know who he is anymore was so-and-so there uh yeah and what was he doing i don't know don't say you don't know you know he, he was next to the woman wasn't he wasn't he on his knees that's why his, his jeans were dirty uh yeah 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 he was on his knees you know like shit like that and they got the kids to like write statements and and a video record these confessions in that manner telling them the whole time you know do you want to go home We just got to finish up here and then I'll let you go home. And long story short, these kids didn't do it. They did not brutally beat and rape this woman who she herself, you know, doesn't remember. Like she, she was like so badly beaten that she was like blacked out and, and couldn't like identify any of them. but couldn't identify anybody, period um and she had like problems walking after that and 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 speaking and she couldn't i think taste anything ever again or smell anything ever again uh something like that like she was sadly all fucked up um and these kids they didn't find any of their dna there was no physical evidence this woman was bludgeoned bloody you know, just completely all fucked up. There wasn't, like, no blood or anything on any of their hands or, or clothes or anything like that. One of them had a bruise on his face that one of the cops uh, gave him from, like, slamming him into the ground. Or I think, like, I think he punched him. And they tried to make it seem in, in, I think, photos and in the trial that that was the lady fighting back to the guy. Uh, to one of the, the kids that, that was raping her. So they had nothing on these kids except for these like coerced false confessions. The four, the way the by the way the the way the uh, this mini series came about is that one of the guys Raymond Santana reached out to Ava DuVernay in her uh, DMs. He slid into her DMs and told and pretty much like pitched the story to her, and she said she would be honored to to tell it, um, but she only wanted to tell it if it was with the blessing of all the all the actual guys. And 
if they were a big part of it because she wanted it to be as authentic as possible. And they did, you know, they, they, she met with all of them. They were on set all the time. They met the actors that were going to be playing them when they were kids and when they were older. And it was just so like tastefully and like beautifully done, like as a, as a process of storytelling and delivering this like extremely important piece of uh, social commentary on our criminal justice system to hopefully spur some criminal criminal justice reform and to spread awareness on what some folks actually do go through and are going through in this country right now and to spread awareness as far as your rights as far as not making sure that you speak to to your children about it and making sure that you yourself know about the fact that you don't if you ever caught up in some sort of situation like this you ask for an attorney right away you don't speak to the cops about it, anything they you have to understand for better or for worse whether they're good cops or bad cops is uh, is the secondary to the fact that they are incentivized by closing cases right think of think of your job whatever it is that you do you have certain tasks certain reports certain widgets whatever it is that you do quotas that you have to meet for cops same deal this is their job open case is bad closed case is good that to me is a negative thing when incentives are aligned with personal benefit in a situation of what's supposed to be quote-unquote blind justice you're gonna have situations like this one and it's not to say that the whole system is shit because i'm sure it works more than it doesn't but it can definitely use improvement, obviously, to bridge the gap between the times that stuff like this doesn't happen and things do work out the correct way and the times that they don't. So the guys wind up going to jail, the kids, four of them go to juvie, and one of them, that 16, gets fucked the worst and goes directly into adult prison, adult jail. And he's actually the one in the story that he was, uh, the cops were after the incident the next day when they had like a bunch of kids like, like locked up, they were canvassing a neighborhood based on names that the, like the, the guys that they had in custody had given them like, Oh, who are you with in the park? Who are your friends' names? Like stuff like that. They compiled this list and they were looking for certain kids and the fifth kid Corey wise which wound up going to adult prison and getting fucked the worst out of everybody um he wasn't even on the list but he was hanging out with his friend that was on the list his friend uh yusuf and the way they tell it in the miniseries is that uh the cops were taking away yusuf and and uh Corey could have just like walked away and the cops were like you want to come too? you want to you want to accompany your buddy go, go home get out of here and and then Corey was like no no I'll, I'll i'll go with him actually and wound up going with him and he got roped into you know this whole conspiracy theory and i don't mean it in the popularized like conspiratorial sense i just mean it in this theory that was conspired by all the parties that were ultimately involved from the cops that worked on coercing the confessions to the head of that department uh, that spearheaded this whole thing, that lady, to the jurors, to the prosecuting attorney, to the judge. Everyone up and down that in hindsight conspired, willingly, unwillingly, knowingly or not, but did so through this broken system and the kids wound up the guys wound up doing i believe hmm, i want to say seven or eight years or something like that and then by the time all four were able to get out and then Corey wise the fifth one he spent the most he spent about 10 or 12 years locked up before he got out the way spoiler alert by the way the way he winds up getting out is that 
I believe all the other guys like just served out their time. Like that was how much time they were given. I believe, but I'm not positive. Actually, yeah, it had to be that, right? Because it didn't. They were out when they finally got exonerated. But the the reason uh, Corey got out, uh, the last one uh, to get out, was because the guy that actually did commit the assault and murder confessed to the crime. When they reran like the DNA evidence and everything, it was his DNA all over the lady. He detailed exactly uh, how he did it, how he carried out the crimes. Everything matched up to the crime scene and to the victim's uh, wounds and all of that. And then they still tried to keep everybody locked up and just say, oh, no, this was just the sixth guy that was involved. And it's just sad how people even operate that way. People, and we all do this, I think, you, you know, obviously to a much lesser extent, but like double down on something when you know you're wrong or you really want to be right about something. That's all ego. And that's, it's important to check that when you see it in yourself. If not, you wind up even to like extreme situations like this one. This lady gave into that. She didn't want to be wrong. She still to this day holds that they were involved, that the five guys were involved. They're completely exonerated, out of prison. Cases dropped, vindicated, awarded like $40 million or, or something like that for all of them to like split up, all five of them to split up uh, amongst themselves, which isn't enough if you ask me, but it's something. And by the way, I have not gotten an official apology from the city of New York. It was just so sad, man. It was just, again, a four-part miniseries, super tastefully done. The actors are great. You want to scream throughout it. You want to cry throughout it. You want to jump for joy at the end throughout it, uh, about it. But at the same time, still break down and cry for the fact that these dudes had to like go through that shit and their families... The struggles that the entire family had to go through. Michael K. Williams acted in it. Shout out to my man Omar. Shout out to my man Chalky White. Definitely check it out, man. It's a mini series called When They See Us, available on Netflix. And I really think that stories like this are important to tell, repeat, share, speak about what resonated with you, listen to others when they're speaking about it keep stories like this in the zeitgeist of our world and in time hopefully perceptions change systems get amended and we find betterment in our outcomes this is a great interview that oprah does where she has like the real guys and she has uh, all the guys that played them as adults and as kids uh, in the movie which by the way the guy that played his name is uh, Jarrell Jerome. He was the only actor that was able to play the child version, like the 16-year-old, and the adult version of Corey Wise, which was dope just like in terms of like range as an actor. That had to be hard as shit to pull off, and he did, and he did a phenomenal job. He was believable in both sides of that role. So shout out to him. As I was speaking about it in an interview and saying that um, like when he read the script, he, he wanted to play that role and he called for it and he wound up reading for it and he really, really wanted it. They didn't cast him right away. And, um, he had, uh, a prior engagement and he was under contract, so he couldn't shave his beard. And, uh, but he, you know, he read for the role of the kid anyway, but Ava DuVernay, like she said that she didn't like really see it because he, you know just look like a grown ass man not like a 15 16 year old and um the day he rapped on that uh other engagement he wound up flying to new york and going straight to ava duvernay you know he shaved and he he reread as the kid and he wound up getting the role and uh wound up getting the role for the adult version as well and like i said it's, it's dope um check out that interview also with oprah it's uh it's a pretty deep one and uh, a good one to see that accompanies this masterful 
miniseries. Again, called When They See Us. Available on Netflix, and I'll link to it in the episode notes, as always.